traditionally trained at art school um, in botanical drawing, technical drawing and painting. And then I moved on to graphic design where I did lots of typography and designed hundreds of typefaces and record sleeves and uh, started to do music videos. And I think somehow we've ended up working in sort of expressive uh, animation, moving image work, but always with a graphic sensibility in terms of the compositions, the colours. Often a lot of our work is quite 2D and graphic, although it's using 3D processes. So it's all informed by that kind of um, graphic sensibility, but in a new context. I used to work in London and I would generally work with people who were up the corridor for me in the same studio building, but now I'm kind of away from the, the loop. I am now kind of searching, I have the whole internet available to me to, as a resource of people. So I find a great person to work with in Japan or San Francisco or South America and you email them, you say, hey, do you want to collaborate? And suddenly it happens. So you're there sat in your log cabin in Sheffield, surrounded by squirrels and birds on iChat with someone from Sao Paulo, a musician from Brighton and a programmer from Tokyo. And it's just a super easy way to work. And I think the internet has completely leveled the playing field so that everybody is in this kind of village now. So the recurring themes in the work at the moment in this exhibition are one of anthropomorphism, which is when you apply a human or an animal tendency to an inanimate object. So that's with the voxel posse with the 3D characters where you have a very sort of cold mathematical shape using architectural processes to make something 3D printed. But then by having legs growing on it, it suddenly becomes a shape you can fall in love with. Um, transfiguration with the big walking monster. Again, it's a very abstract sculptural form, but as soon as you make it walk, it becomes alive. Um, so that's certainly a recurring theme. And another, I think, is one of just utopia and trying to use the tools that we have, these powerful sort of supercomputer tools to create very optimistic, positive views of what technology can bring to mankind rather than it being the kind of doom and gloom and paranoia of CCTV and censorship and privacy issues and things. It's really sort of looking at the flip side of that. You know, we're super excited by what the potential technology has, but also um, what beauty it can create also, you know, like the warmth and the empathy that you can have um, through technology. It doesn't have to be a cold, heartless, uh, digital thing. I think these days, more and more, every surface can be a screen. You can get fabric with LEDs impregnated into it. You can get skyscrapers with video walls covered across the entire surface. Um, so I guess my dream project ultimately would be projecting onto the moon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, not, in, not in an egotistical way, but just, just in the sense that it seems these days that any surface can be a canvas for moving image. <laughs>